welcome this is Radhya and I'm here with another brand new topic introduction to chemistry we're not going into experiments right now I'll do a couple more videos about chemistry later uh, later onwards first of all we'll start with an introduction so this is introduction to chemistry we'll first of all start with science science now is uh, an accumulation or a gathering of all the observations and all the experiments done by a uh, done by a scientist who with extensive research paves the path for mankind to progress science now is divided into um, three categories science is bifurcated into three categories or subjects physics chemistry and biology physics deals with the study of life uh, sorry physics deals with the study of different kinds of uh, different forms of energy such as um, sound, light, heat, etc. While biology deals with the study of living organisms um, such as plants and animals um, which we find in zoology and botany. So in today's video we are going to focus on chemistry. So chemistry deals with the study of different kinds of substances their uh, ke their chemical reactions with other substances their composition and um, their properties and much more so the two main branches of chemistry are organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry organic um, inorganic chemistry um, includes the study of um, basically innumerable substances and elements including metals and non-metals. Organic chemistry includes the study of uh, various kinds of carbon compounds uh, made up mainly of carbon and hydrogen. So, you know the scientists and chemists or chemists um, in chemistry laboratories who do many kinds of experiments with different kinds of glass jars and stuff. Um, let's learn a little bit about them. Um, some of the basic chem apparatus used in chemistry laboratories are we're starting with test tubes and then we've got beakers, we've got uh, flasks, we've got different types and flasks like round bottom flask, flat bottom flask, uh, coni um, conical. conical flasks and we've got retorts and uh, we've got stands and holders for all these like test tube holders, test tube stand, we've got uh, the retort stand, we've got the tripod stand, we've got wire gauge and we've got um, other basic apparatus such as um, let's say what others do we have we've got crystal funnel we've got um, normal funnels we've got glass jars we've got measuring apparatus such as pipit uh, burette um, measuring cylinder obviously um, and all these were a few of the basic chemistry apparatus used in chemistry laboratories these are just a few to name so moving on Mm, right now we're going to learn a bit about chemists because we cannot start the topic without scientists or chemists. So um, first of all, let's learn about alchemists and alchemy. Basically, alchemists and alchemy are the older words for chemistry and chemists and they're just the predecessors of modern chemistry and chemists. And you know, so alchemists, um, they were actually largely are discredited by the scientific community because alchemists include uh, included occult and religion leading to their scientific research so they were largely discredited so um, these alchemists these alchemists um, till the 17th century they were successful to a certain extent in development of progress but then uh, after the 17th century chemistry started regaining its um, rightful position as a serious scientific field so then um, so then yeah moving on now that chemistry is developed um, alchemy is now considered like wait what really alchemy so yeah um, it's not a really thing right now in the modern world um, so chemistry uh, regains its rightful field as a serious scientific field as people like to say it and um, we've got a few notable chemists and scientists on our list right now and let's learn about them starting with Van Helmut. Van Helmut he uh, discovered carbon dioxide by heating charcoal in air um, yeah by heating charcoal in air moving on we've got Glaber, I think that's how it's pronounced. So he um, he invented or made um, so hydrogen chlorox uh, hydrogen chloride gas by 
um, by mixing sodium chloride and uh, concentrated sulfuric acid okay these names are getting a bit too chemistric so um, he later also invented nitric acid by potassium nitrate and uh, sulfuric concentrated sulfuric acid um, so yeah moving on we've got joseph priestley on our list as well and he discovered uh, sulfur dioxide gas sulfur dioxide gas by the action of hot concentrated sulfuric acid on mercury and moving on we've got jo um we've got let's see who else have we got on our list actually we've got john dalton on our list um john dalton now was an english scientist uh, he was born in 1766 and he is credited to creating dalton's atomic theory and one some of the main principles of his theory was that matter consists of small particles or molecules called atoms and these atoms are indivisible and they cannot be created or destroyed so yeah moving on we've got antony lavoisier in our list um he was a french scientist born in 1843 wait a moment it's 1743 yeah wait okay i'm really bad at remembering dates it's uh 1843 uh okay <laughs> sorry it's 1743 so um yeah antony lavoisier who was born in 1743 um is credited with uh discovering oxygen later hydrogen and he also helped uh, to recreate reform chemical nomenclature and yeah he is a scientist who is worth being remembered and moving on we've got dmitry mendeleev who was a russian scientist this time um he was born in 1734 uh, 1834 he was born in 1834 and um uh he is one of my favorite out of the list he is credited with uh, um creating the periodic table of elements he has systematically arranged all the dozens of known elements by atomic weight man that must have taken a long time and um he is credited with creating the periodic table and also um periodic law and yeah he's brilliant so moving on these were all the chemists we've got a russian chemist we've got a french chemist we've got an english chemist uh moving on um chemistry has its own uses in life right now knowledge of chemistry has helped us uh create many products like uh with chemical reactions and it has helped us to do stuff like agriculture um chemistry helps us basically in short form chemistry does its own not in life so chemistry has its own use in agriculture um for example fertilizers and pesticides um fertilizers are the substances that you add um to improve fertility and also to sub, uh, improve the supply of plant nutrients and yeah one of the widely used fertilizers is the ammonium nitrate and also um besides the ammonium nitrate we've got the urea which is a fertilizer uh, that is an important source of hydrogen and we've got uh, the phosphatic fertilizer which is also fertilizer that is a superb phosphatase and um like most of the fertilizers like about 90% of the fertilizers are in the solid form um and the liquid fertilizers comprise of ammonia or ammonium nitrate um and yeah moving on we have pesticides so what exactly are pesticides about 30% of the agricultural crops are destroyed by agricultural pests so farmers use pesticides to protect their crops from the pesky little pests so yeah um pesticides are of different types we've got termicides we've got insecticides we've got herbicides all for killing or destroying or preventing pests um insecticides kill or destroy or prevent insects from uh, attacking the plants and stuff and herbicides prevent or destroy prevent um unwanted plants from growing in an area where there's supposed to be a beautiful crop growing so yeah um we've got many sorts of pesticides like these moving on we also have um food preservatives on our list um um we also use chemistry in food preservatives 
first of all what exactly are food preservatives uh, we use food preservatives for basically preserving food as the name suggests itself um, for various reasons like preventing bacteria be preventing uh, decomposition uh, due to bacteria or microbes um, cutting off food borne infections from our list because honestly uh, during this covid-19 period we do not want another disease to head head over us so yeah and also to um uh preserve the nutritious quality of food some of the food preservatives we use are uh, the benzoic acid uh, which is used for jams and pickles and carbonated drinks basically and we've got nitrates for meat products and we've also got sulfuric sulfuric sulfur compounds for um wines and drinks and etc and we've also got food uh food processing basically we food processing is basically the process where we try to make food a bit more easily usable for example we uh for example processing fish something like that so there are many processes of processing food like um cooking um to name one of them and we've also got many food processing industries like sugar industry we've got fish processing we've got uh, meat packaging we've got tinned vegetables and then also uh, some industries that make snacks and yeah we've got many industries of food processing uh moving on we've got cosmetics on our list chemistry is also useful uh when it comes to making cosmetics cosmetics are um well what exactly are cosmetics oh my gosh my hair is getting out of control um so yeah what exactly are cosmetics cosmetics are made from are um cosmetics are basically substances uh that enhance or alter the appearance or fragrance of an individual and cosmetics are basically made from um natural sources or synthetic sources um and basically they're made from stuff like uh, modified natural oils fats and uh, processed minerals like oxides of zinc and iron and talc so let's learn about this in a bit more detail now what is exactly talc talc in powder is made from talc um This talc, in its natural form, completely natural form, contains asbestos. I think that's how what is called, um, which is removed from the consumer product list. And um, talc helps the skin. Uh, it cuts down on friction, keeps the skin dry, and absorbs moisture, and also it prevents rashes. So yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty useful cosmetic. Um, so, but the basic ingredients in cosmetics. let's learn about them uh well first of all starting with water obviously um so water is not just a drinking product it's also used in cosmetics so yeah water is one of the basic ingredients used for making cosmetics it's used as a solvent to dissolve other water soluble substances and then we've got titanium dioxide yes um yeah we've got titanium dioxide it uh, provides mild sun protection moving on we've got both the oxides of zinc and iron they um what do they give all right they give um anti inflammatory properties they have anti inflammatory properties so they're also used in cosmetics and then we've got the emulsifier which is basically oil dissolved in water and the emulsifier it provides even texture for the cosmetics and we've got preservatives finally um now preservatives are stuff that uh basically in, improve the extend the shelf life of a cosmetic and they might so also um prevent microbes from microbes or microbacteria or whatever uh from uh coming uh probably so yeah moving on we've got clothing as well um chemistry helps us in clothing as well chemistry is used in clothing as well so uh what exactly is clothing uh clothing is basically a fabric used for covering the body that's um no one can argue with that because that's absolutely true um and yeah um clothing is made from fibers or fabrics fibers um like 
wool or cotton clothing is basically made from natural sources or synthetic sources again um, natural sources like cotton or wool or synthetic sources like uh, trilene nylon rayon etc so moving on uh, what exactly is trilene uh, trilene is basically a fiber a synthetic fiber used in clothing and it uh, um, it, ha it has many properties um, it has many properties and uses. We use trilene in carpets, raincoats, ropes, fishing nets sometimes, I guess, and uh, many others. And its uses also include that it can be washed easily, it can be dried off easily, um, it um, prevents friction, um, it is resistant to friction, it is resistant to uh, wrinkly stuff you know on the clothes and it's elastic in nature and yeah moving on we've also got medicines on our list um, chemistry is used in medicines what exactly are medicines medicines are basically used when you're ill uh, you take them and medicines uh, prevent a disease or help you to get better when you're ill and yeah medicines um, basically that's what medicines are um, chemistry is needed when you, uh, chemistry is needed um, for helping researchers to create drugs to um, to create drugs for that combat with the illness and by acting efficiently with the diseased body and once the promising molecule is recognized chemistry is required to know uh, um, basically which molecule is preferred for which disease by the body so yeah um, some medicines widely used are aspirin and paracetamol um, aspirin is basically a medicine used for treating mild to moderate pain or fever or inflammation um, so yeah aspirin um, given shortly after a heart attack may reduce the risks of death and in their long-term use aspirin um, might prevent blood clots however it's not recommended for children with infections but it is still one of the mainly used um, medications globally so yeah um, some of the side effects of aspirin may include upset stomachs stomach ulcers etc um, moving on we've got paracetamol um, which is another medicine as well used to treat mild to moderate pain or fever again um, yeah and basically paracetamol uh, might come with um, might get into the category of medications used uh, when people have a cold and um, they are actually safe when we use it in recommended doses but uh, too much of a dose too much of a good thing is never good so too much of a dose may lead to side effects like liver problems problems in the liver liver problems stuff like that um, we've got other medicines as well such as vitamin vitamin b12 and we've got other medicines and so on yeah i can't name every single medicine in the world so moving on we've got soaps as well well more like cleaning agents yay so imagine this um we've got tons of dishes to wash we've got uh tons of clothes on the loose all with stains now what exactly are we doing in your house is a mess now we've got cleaning agents to the rescue yay so we've got tons of cleaning agents like we've got soap we've got detergent we've got other stuff for removing stains on clothes um basically soaps are you use soaps for with water along with water you use it for washing uh, sometimes bathing well actually we use it to bathe every day um, so yeah um, we use soap for many stuff and we've got detergents as well um, they detergents are made from petroleum uh, pro petroleum products so yeah then we've got stain removers as well many kinds of stain removers um, we've got hydrogen peroxide which is used for removing stains it is a mild stain remover and then we've got uh, sodium hydroxide which is also a stain remover and actually we can even um, boiled water we can also use for removing stains uh, it is used for removing sm um, small stains like fruit juice stains on clothes and um, yeah we can actually also use lemon juice for removing stains 
uh, on cloths on cloths not on walls and stuff like that um, so yeah moving on we've got products on our list as well now what exactly do i mean by products i mean when i mean products i mean loads of stuff food construction stuff like those household uh, many stuff remember when i said chemistry helps us to do many stuff it plays its own nut in life i also helped us to create stuff like uh, create stuff well we're going to learn about those stuff well there are many uh, stuff in food there are many things in food that uh, are made uh, from chemical reactions like butter cheese many others and when we come to the topic of construction uh, cement and glass they're all chemical uh, they're all chemical items and uh, moving on um, what exactly was it on my list again we've got petroleum uh, petroleum products like um, let's see petrol diesel and others um, they are made they are petroleum products made from chemical reactions we've got household stuff like gas um, which is um, also called lpc uh, sorry lpg um, they also involve chemistry so many of these products like these involve chemistry and yeah those are about all the uses i'm going to tell you about chemistry and um i think that's it for today um until next time i'm raj i'll see you in the next video stay tuned for more videos by subscribing my channel oh jesus uh, i could literally drink a whole tank of water after all this talking <laughs> oh jesus please help me <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um and i'm just going to do the annoying youtuber thing and ask you to subscribe if you like my videos if you didn't like them that's totally fine uh moving on peace out bye bye